Retro Bitch just sent us a bunch of LED controllers. Now they've sent us stuff in the past, but this time their controllers are a little... enlightening? Ha! Yeah, it wasn't a funny joke. Let's take a look, though. So Retrobit has a company brand, something called Retrolink, and they sent us four controllers. An NES controller, a GameCube controller, a Nintendo 64 controller, and a Super Nintendo controller. Now, look, guys, these controllers are not made for the original consoles that they were designed from. These are USB controllers for the PC. Uh, some consoles may be able to use them, but traditionally these things are just gonna work for the PC and that's all we really tested them on. Now, while they are pretty neat controllers with a really cool transparent plastic, there's a reason why they're transparent plastic. These suckers light up. Now, to begin with, as controllers, they're pretty cool. I've had a couple of controllers sent in from Retrolink in the past, and right off the bat, the NES controller feels like an original NES controller with very little changes. Um, the only problem I had with it was that the D-pad kind of pops in completely, but there's still enough roll on it where you don't notice it. Also, the Super Nintendo controller has a really good pivot on the D-pad, so it feels like a really good Super Nintendo controller. The Nintendo 64 controller doesn't have a pivot on the D-pad and it kind of just pops in completely, but once again, it's usable. And although these controllers are pretty well manufactured, I gotta say that the one that really stands out the most is the GameCube controller. Now look, I've used a lot of GameCube controllers in my life, but this one right here feels like a brand new GameCube controller with possibly better, more snappy responses in the buttons. The Z button, for instance, clicks, and that's awesome. See, Z buttons on everything else that I've used kind of feel more uh, a little just like softer and all the GameCube controllers I have just don't have that nice clicking sound, but this one does and it really, really works. Uh, the only criticism I'd give for this controller is that when you push the uh, triggers down all the way, uh, sometimes they don't pop in all the way like you would see on a real GameCube controller where they have that kind of snap at the end of its push. Uh, but these still work great and they're still very responsive, so you just gotta get used to that little thing. Other than that, the C, the directional pad, the thumbstick, the buttons all feel fantastic. And in some cases they feel a little bit more snappier because it's a brand new controller. Now, to begin with everything, these controllers, as controllers, work really well. Uh, you may find a little bit of a difference in the D-pad here and there with the N64 controller and the NES controller, but honestly, they all work great and I used them with a bunch of games and they played well. But that's not really why you're picking up these controllers. Now, these controllers right here, the NES and the Super Nintendo, are really, really cool. They allow you to switch between different color spectrums using the back and the top. So you can make this look red, green, or blue. And you can also have this little off button here so you can turn off the color if you don't want these things lighting up in a dark room. But a nice little additional feature is on the top of these controllers, they have a little brightness style so you can adjust the brightness to be really high or really low. Now I know a lot of people that buy these controllers may not want the LED lights on, in which case you don't have to buy them. A Retrolink creates these exact same controllers without the LEDs in them. But if you do want the LEDs, they have a lot of different functionality and a lot of different options that you can pick from, and it's great. One thing I would have loved to happen is every time you push the buttons, they would have lit a different color, but that's fine that they didn't do that. That's just kind of a neat thing I would have done. But anyway, these controllers as they stand are really good and the LED lights on them are very bright and very customizable. Now, these controllers offer the same kind of customizability. The Nintendo 64 controller, on the other hand, only offers the ability to switch from off and red, green, and blue. Now, the red, green, and blue always stay bright. Unlike the Super Nintendo and NES controller, you can't change the brightness, but this thing just works fantastic. Now, a lot of people were mentioning maybe they wouldn't like the brightness on it and all that stuff, and I get that. So this does have the off option. Now, like I said, the GameCube controller here is fantastic, but the GameCube controller has the one function I don't like. It just lights blue and that's it. Now, it's a really bright light. In fact, from what I could tell just looking at it, this bright light on here is brighter than the LEDs on these controllers, but you can't turn it off and you can't adjust the brightness and you can't change it to be any other color. 
So with this controller, despite the fact that it's probably the best well-built one out of all of them, you can't adjust anything on it. So the light goes on and that's it, you don't have any control. But one additional function they have on it is that there is actually a vibration motor in it. Now the NES and Super Nintendo controllers don't come with uh, drivers or anything like that, but the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube do simply because it has a different kind of selection of buttons on the front. Now the GameCube controller, once you install the drivers, you can actually use this to emulate GameCube games on the PC and the vibration motor works perfectly fine once you've set it up. But the N64 controller, ah, this kind of bugs me. Now Retrolink has made Nintendo 64 controllers in the past and there's a little slot here where there would have been the expansion port for memory cards or the rumble pack. Now, this controller doesn't have any rumble pack insertion ability because in this part here, there's actually no uh, connection port. It's just an empty slot. And there's no built-in vibration motor in the N64 controller itself, which I would have really preferred to have something like that because the GameCube controller originally had one built in, so they built it into this. And it would have been cool to see Retrolink actually manage some way to get vibration on here. But it's not marketed that way. It's just something I would have liked. Overall, these controllers are pretty cool. They offer a lot of really cool functionality and they work on pretty much every game we tested them with. Even with the D-pad being a little bit soft, they worked great. But the GameCube controller here, even with the no ability to turn off the lights or adjust the brightness, this thing was simply the best controller in the entire set. I honestly prefer this to my original GameCube controllers that Nintendo released and that shocked the hell out of me. This thing is fantastic and it's worth buying alone. These controllers are great, but if you're gonna get any of them, if you're a GameCube fan, this is the one to get. It's got a great D-pad, it's got a fantastic uh, selection of buttons, and everything's very responsive and very clicky. Seriously, a really good manufacturer, and Retrolink, you guys, or Retrobit, you guys did a fantastic job on this controller. I can't recommend it enough. So, if you're looking to get some PC controllers that light up in the darkness, guys, these ones are really good. Now, while the D-pads, like I said, don't represent the exact same feel you get from the original NES and the original N64, everything else from these guys are fantastic. Well worth a buy. I definitely recommend them.